In this video we will look at some ways to identify the elements in the DOM and we will use the traditional locators. A locator is a way to identify elements on a page and Selenium provides support for locators like class name, CSS selector, ID, name, link text, partial link text, tag name and XPAT. So let's use those locators to identify some of the web elements from Selenium website. To identify the locators, I'll be using Chrome browser, but you can do this on any browser. I'm already on the Selenium website, and the first thing is to go and open the developer tools from Chrome. Or just press F12. Let's start with the class name locator and let's identify the search element from here. So let's inspect this element. And here in the HTML we can see this element is a button and has this class doc search. So this is the class name we want to use in Selenium. We can also test this here in developer tools. So let's press Ctrl F. So here we can search by string or CSS selector or XPAT. Let's write a small CSS selector in order to test the class locator. So in this case is dot and doc search. And as we can see, it finds our element if we mouse over this yellow line we can see top right the web element which is identified on the page and also here at the bottom we can see it finds one of one which means is unique on the page please keep in mind this is case sensitive so that means doc search starting with a capital letter is not the same with doc search starting with a lower letter so now let's switch to visual studio and use this class name locator. I created a new test class for locators test. Inside this class we have the locators test method and here we create a Chrome driver instance, we maximize the browser window, then we navigate to Selenium website, we check the page title and here let's also add the locator validations. So the first one is class name, Interaction with a web page requires to locate the web element. Selenium offers few options to do this, like find element or find elements methods. For now, we'll use find element. This find element takes by object as a parameter and returns a web element object. We'll use driver find element. Here we have to pass a by. This is the case when we use the class name. And here we have to pass the locator, which in our case is doc search. And let's check if this is displayed. And that's it. Let's give it a run now. And as expected, everything is OK. Let's go on with the next locator, which is CSS selector. And actually, we already have this CSS selector. So we start with a dot, which signifies is a class name, followed by the class name. This time we will call the CSS selector method and pass the CSS selector.
and that's it let's give it a run let's go on with the next locator which is id for this locator let's go and click on inspector arrow and we will use this selenium logo element we find here the id attribute which is selenium logo first let's check this is unique on the page so let's go here and write the css selector in this case we will search for a css selector which looks for an id to do that we will start with hash followed by the id name And as we can see, we get back the element we need. And this is also visible on the top left. And we have one of one, which is OK. Let's go back now to Visual Studio and use this locator. And this time we'll use the ID method. And that's it. Let's go now and give it a run. And as expected, this is also OK. OK, so let's go on with the next locator, which is name. For this, let's inspect this web element. And as we can see, this is an input and it has this name attribute with value submit let's test this in developer tools first so here we will write a simple css selector which uses the name attribute and this is our web element and is also unique on the page so let's go now in visual studio and use this locator Select the name method. And also let's check this is displayed. So there it is. We use the name method and pass the name locator value. Let's give it a run. And as expected, this is also OK. Let's go on with the next locator, which is link text. We will inspect the links from the header, like documentation. And what we need here is just the link text name. In this case, documentation. This time we will use the link text method. Let's give it a run. And the next locator we are going to use is partial link text, which is very similar with the link text, only that we will use a substring of the link text. So let's write this. This time we'll use the partial link text method. And as a parameter, we will just set a substring of the documentation link text. Let's go back to Text Explorer and give it another run. Let's continue with the next locator, which is tag. 
we want to check this nav tag is present. So let's go back to Visual Studio and use this locator. Let's call the tag name. And let's check this is displayed. Let's go to Test Explorer and give it another run. And everything is fine also using the tag locator. Now it's time to look at one more locator which is the XPAD. XPAD can be used to navigate XML or HTML documents and it uses path expressions to select nodes or node sets in an XML document or in our case an HTML document. In this case let's assume we want to check this heading here and as we can see this heading is a h1 tag. We'll use a double slash which is used to create XPAD with relative path. For example, we can start from anywhere in the document. So to validate this h1 is present, we start double slash and the name of the tag. As you can see, this is the element we want to check and is also unique on the page. Now let's use this xpad in our test method. This time we will call the xpad method and pass as parameter double slash h1. And there it is, our element is now identified using the xpad locator. Let's go in Test Explorer and give it another run. And this one seems also to be fine. So as we can see, when we are talking about traditional locators, we have multiple ways like class name, CSS selector, or ID. Then we have name, link text, partial link text, tag name, or XPAD. Now, both XPAD or CSS are the most frequently used locators in Selenium. Of course, it is recommended if we can use locators like ID, name, class name, tag name, link text or partial link text to do so. But when this is not possible, maybe these are not available or there are no unique attributes available to identify the web elements with those locators, we should go on and use XPAD or CSS locators. When to use which, it depends and there are a few differences between XPAT and CSS. For example, XPAT allows bidirectional flow parent to child or child to parent. Also, with the help of the text function, XPAT allows identification using the visible text appearing on the screen. And in favor of CSS selector, this is more readable and maybe slightly faster even though this is debatable depending on the case and on the browser. And in general, maybe it's better to adopt a more hybrid approach, focusing first on IDs, then on the other traditional locators or CSS selector and expats for more advanced locators. That would be all for now. Thank you very much for your time and see you at the next one. Bye.